the United Kingdom, divided kingdom, single kingdom era after the Assyrian captivity, return and rebuild. That's it. Wasn't that fun? I had a lot of fun doing that. Tonight we're on the Bible period three, the Exodus and the wanderings. And I want to make an apology right off the bat. You've got more typographical errors and mistakes this time than I could shake a stick at. And I was so embarrassed I almost redid the thing. I didn't. It's good for my humility. Okay, uh, so tonight what we're going to do is we're going to look at Bible period three, the Exodus and the wanderings. And along the way you're going to have to make a few um, adjustments. The, uh, the dates for this would be 1446, which is the date we're picking for the Exodus, 1446 to 1406. And this period of time basically mirrors the life of Moses. So this is the, uh, the third major Bible period um, and uh, covers the 40 years of the exit from Egypt and the people going to Mount Sinai where they enter into a covenant relationship with God in uh, what would become known as the law. Because of unbelief, that first generation that left Egypt would not enter Canaan to possess it, but would die in the wilderness. That's this period we're looking at here. So Exodus and the Wanderer. The scripture for this would be the book of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. All right, and I thought it'd be good for us just to give a little bit of a summary of these books. And uh, the book of Exodus is about these things. First, we're going to do what? We're going to get out of Egypt. That, that way the name uh, Exodus makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, we're going to get out of Egypt, and we're going to go to Sinai. God's going to lead them to Mount Sinai. And uh, there they're going to get the law, and they're going to build the tabernacle, and they're going to enter the Mosaic covenant with God. Okay? Give you a chance to write that down. We're going to get out of Egypt by way of the, uh, what sea? The Red Sea. And we're going to go to Sinai. And uh, there they will get the law and several other things happen. Okay, that's the book of Exodus. The book of Leviticus, a little synopsis of that, would just be four words. Levites and priests and offerings and feasts. Leviticus chapter 23 is uh, one of your most important chapters in the Old Testament because it describes the feast that Israel was to observe. Uh, but uh, that book is about Levites and priests and offerings and feasts. The book of Numbers. Okay, some of you are still writing a little bit. Okay, book of Numbers. Uh, a little synopsis of that book. Um, now you're going to have maybe a little difference here. And here you're going to have to take care of one of these administrative uh, things and copy what you see off the screen. Okay. Um, so uh, the book of Numbers... Let's just go through it that they count the people. That's the first thing you do in the book of Numbers. And they count the people that are leaving Mount Sinai, getting ready to leave Mount Sinai. And uh, they get marching orders. Then they travel to Kadesh Barnea, send 12 spies into Canaan. And then that awful decision, they decided they could not enter the promised land because they just couldn't trust God. And so they're judged by God to wander 40 years in the wilderness. Now, when we say wander, you know, it's not like I'm lost, I don't have a GPS, don't know where I am. They knew exactly where they were all the time. The wilderness wanderings is just a term to say that the people could not settle anywhere. They were kind of in limbo as far as, you know, this is not, this is not any place for us to permanently be established. We can't really raise a crop, we can't do much of anything. We are just wandering, eating the manna that God gives us, and, and so it was just a time of not being in a permanent dwelling. They dwelt in tents um, during that time. 
Okay. And uh, so they're judged by God. Now, synopsis of the book of Deuteronomy. Moses gives the book of Deuteronomy. You don't have it? On the back side. Back of the next. Oh, boy. How'd that happen? Nobody knows. What's that? Oh, okay, the hole's on the wrong side. All right. Okay, well, you may have that problem again. <laughs> all right, so everybody find it. You don't all have it. On the back of the next page. <laughs> all right, well, what happens here is that, first of all, Moses is giving the law to the second generation. The previous generation have died in the wilderness. The one that uh, voted on that fateful day, we can't trust God at Kadesh Barnea. They, yeah. Well, you can write it down. Now, so what they do is um, they die in the wilderness, and the second generation comes, and before Moses dies... He gives the law to the second generation and has them enter into the same covenant. And so we outline this book, or ba the highlights of it would be, first of all, it's a big history lesson. Where we came from, you know, what has happened so far, what happened with your folks, they may not have told you the stories, I'm going to tell you what happened. And so he sets them straight on the last 40 years and... Uh, sets them straight on why they left Egypt in the first place. And so that's a big history lesson. I imagine that there were some families that weren't particularly fond of sharing all their failures with their children. And maybe they had different stories. And so the first thing Moses wants to do is get it straight, folks. This is why we're not in the promised land yet. Second thing, he gives the law to the second generation. And they enter. The covenant is renewed. And then Joshua is appointed to take over, and then Moses dies. That's the book of Deuteronomy. All right, now we're going to go through events. We always go through the events. This would be, this would be the events of this time period, and uh, the, we're going to do this by location. We're going to look at Egypt, the Red Sea, Sinai, Kadesh Barnea, and Mount Nebo. Those would be the five places in this time period that we look at. All right, first of all, then, events in Egypt. And here you're going to have to make a correction because the first two aren't right. All right, the first, uh, right in the middle of the, now, did you find it? Anybody find that page? No, I still didn't give one to Kenny. Oh, okay. Events in Egypt. The first one where it says oppression of Israel, cross that out and put the good days in Egypt. The good days in Egypt. And the first, uh, they don't last very long in uh, the book of Exodus. Now, they don't last very long at all. Just uh, about the first seven verses is about all. And talks about the people that came down and the prosperity and the happy life they had and how they've grown into a big nation and all of that. And about seven verses is all the good stuff you'll find for them in this book right there. Okay, so the second thing that happens... Um, B, you need to change. You need to change this as well. Uh, the new Pharaoh's fears. There was a new Pharaoh that arose, and when the new Pharaoh arose, he was afraid because this group of Israelites has grown to a huge nation. In fact, we'll get the numbers later, but it's six hundred thousand men of fighting age. Now, if you've got six hundred thousand men of fighting age, how many people do you suppose you have? I mean, you've got women, old men, and children that are not being counted in the 600,000. So estimates have been made of around 2 million. And so this Pharaoh says, we've got 2 million people living up there in Goshen. This is bad. What happens if we have another nation that attacks us? They're going to, you know, join forces with the other nation and we'll, ah, we'll be in trouble. 
So let's put them into slavery. And uh, that's the fears that they have. All right, dating of the Exodus. Dating of the Exodus. We're going to go with the date of 1446. And I'd, have to, uh, I'd last ask you to open up your Bible to 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 6, okay, 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1. In the 400th year, 480th year after Israel had come out of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Ziv, the second month, he began to build the temple of the Lord. All right, now this nails something down for us. Um, the reason that this is so important is we know what that date was. Because of Assyrian calendars and other things, we can, we can pinpoint that down to um, the fourth year of Solomon's reign being 966 B.C. So 966 B.C. Um, would be the fourth year of his reign. Now if you add the 480 years that the text says, in the 480th year after um, the Exodus, Solomon begins building the temple. And so if you will add 480 to the 966, then you come up with the 1446 date for the Exodus. Now some of you have probably um, gone down to the museum or gone down, I know at the, um, uh, the train station had, uh, had some things on the pharaohs and so on like that, um, and they went with an early date of 12 something, um, which is if you go with the date of 1200, which we call 